Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and I'm going to deal with picture tests and practical anatomy of the thorax. Today, I'm going to deal with the heart, part 4. You may use the video as a revision or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend some time to read the question and come up with the answer. Replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. With an apparent artery and vein, blood usually flows in the opposite direction. An unusual situation where blood is flowing in the same direction occurs in which of the numbered locations? First, we have to identify the arteries and the accompanying veins. The artery in one is a ventricular branch of the right coronary artery that supplies the right ventricle, and the arrow represents the direction of blood in this artery. It is accompanied by an anterior cardiac vein which drains into the right atrium. This is one of the exceptions where the venous blood of the heart drains directly into the right atrium and not into the coronary sinus. So location one has the artery and vein carrying blood flowing in opposite directions. Let's study location two. Location two is the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery. The arrow represents the direction of the arterial blood towards the apex of the heart. The artery is going to proceed around the heart on the inferior surface where it's anastomosis with the posterior interventricular artery. It is accompanied by the vein. The vein is the great cardiac vein, and it carries the blood up from the apex of the heart toward the left border, and then passes around the left border to continue as the coronary sinus. Again, the blood in the artery and vein at two are in opposite directions. Location three represents a pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lung, hence the blue color of the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary vein carries blood, oxygenated blood, from the lung to the left atrium of the heart. It is colored red because it carries oxygenated blood, but it is called vein because it carries blood toward the heart. Vessels that carry the blood away from the heart are called arteries, whether they contain oxygenated or deoxygenated blood, and blood vessels that carry blood toward the heart are called veins, whether they contain oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. Again, you can see that at location 3, blood flows in opposite directions. At location 4, as I have just mentioned, is the continuation of the great cardiac vein in the coronary sulcus around the left border of the heart and the blood flows in this direction to reach the right atrium where the coronary sinus opens. The coronary sinus carries deoxygenated venous blood back to the right atrium. At location four, it is accompanied by the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery, which also carries blood in the same direction around the heart. And usually it anastomoses with the end of the right coronary artery but in some situations, it continues to provide the posterior interventricular artery instead of the right coronary artery or in combination with the left coronary artery. So you can see here that at location four, this is the unusual situation where the blood is flowing in the same direction with an apparent artery and vein. Option five shows the posterior interventricular artery and it is accompanied by the middle cardiac vein. The middle cardiac vein carries the blood up to the coronary sinus. So again, at five, the venous blood and arterial blood, they pass in opposite direction. Identify the blood vessel A, what type of blood it carries. Identify the blood vessel B, in which groove it lies at this location. Identify the groove C. Name the two vessels that were removed from the groove during dissection. This is an anterior view of the heart showing the right atrium at the right border receiving the superior vena cava. The vessel A lies in a horizontal direction and it is the right pulmonary vein that continues behind the heart to open into the left atrium which forms the posterior chamber of the heart. This pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lung to the heart 
As for B, note that the right atrium is separated from the right ventricle by the right atrioventricular groove or the coronary sulcus. It is called coronary because it lodges the right coronary artery here. The stump of the right coronary artery is labeled B, and you can see how it originates from the ascending aorta. Regarding the groove C, this is the anterior interventricular groove that lies between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Note that the left ventricle forms the apex of the heart, and the right ventricle forms most of the anterior surface of the heart. The anterior interventricular groove contains the anterior interventricular artery, which is a branch of the left coronary artery, also called left anterior descending, and the accompanying vein is the great cardiac vein that continues around the left border of the heart to form the coronary sinus. In pulmonary valve stenosis, which of the chambers 1 to 4 would be hypertrophied? This is an anterior view of the heart showing the right atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Note that the right coronary artery is located in the right atrioventricular sulcus, or groove, between right atrium and right ventricle. And note that a trace of the anterior interventricular artery is seen in the anterior interventricular groove between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. The left atrium is the posterior chamber of the heart, and here only its auricle can be seen on the left border, located between the left ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary valve is located at the beginning of the pulmonary trunk, guarding the pulmonary orifice. Pulmonary stenosis is a condition characterized by obstruction of blood flow from the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk. The valve doesn't open correctly, restricting blood flow. In severe and long-standing pulmonary stenosis, the heart's right ventricle must pump harder to force blood into the pulmonary artery. Pumping of the right ventricle against increased pressure causes the muscular wall of the ventricle to thicken, resulting in right ventricular hypertrophy. So the correct answer here is to the right ventricle. Identify the structure A between which walls it extends, and in order for the blood to move from 1 to 2, the blood should pass through which opening? This is an anterior view of the heart showing the inside of the right atrium and the right ventricle. Both chambers have windows in their anterior wall. Structure A is a unique feature of the right ventricle. It is the septal marginal trabecula or moderator band which forms a bridge between the lower portion of the interventricular septum and the base of the anterior papillary muscle as it is attached to the anterior wall of the right ventricle. The septal marginal trabecula carries a portion of the right bundle of the atrioventricular bundle to the anterior wall of the right ventricle. As for section B of this question, in order for the blood to flow from the right atrium to the right ventricle, it has to pass through the right atrioventricular orifice, which is guarded by the tricuspid valve. Identify the opening A, which part of the conducting system of the heart is located at B. This is a longitudinal section of the heart showing the four chambers. The section is more toward the posterior aspect of the heart. That's why it shows more of the left side of the heart. So you can see the left atrium, which is located posterior to the right atrium, and the left ventricle, located posterior to the right ventricle. The septum here between the two atria is the interatrial septum, and this is the interventricular septum. The inside of the cavity of the left atrium shows the openings of the four pulmonary veins. A is therefore the opening of the inferior left pulmonary veins, these veins that bring the oxygenated blood from the lung. The arrow B is pointing to the interatrial septum. This area is in close proximity to the opening of the coronary sinus here, close to the inferior vena cava opening, and close to the attachment of the tricuspid valve. This is where the AV node is located. The AV node is the backup pacemaker. The natural pacemaker is the SA node, which is located somewhere here at the opening of the superior vena cava, close to the superior end of the crista terminalis. The AV node conducts the impulse to the ventricles along the AV bundle, which passes through the membranous part of the interventricular septum and then splits as it reaches the muscular part into right and left bundle branches. 
which part of the conducting system is located in A and to which serous cavity is the ROB indicating. This is a parasagittal section of the thorax which passes through the left lung and the heart. The heart is surrounded by the pericardium, as you can see it here, and there is a deep cardiac impression of the left lung that accommodates the left ventricle. You can tell that it is the left ventricle by the thickness of its wall and by the circular profile of its section. And also you can see here that the right ventricle is located anterior to it and has a crescentic shape. Interventricular septum bulges into the cavity of the right ventricle. That's why making the cavity of the right ventricle crescentic while the left ventricle is circular. So A is the interventricular septum and in its membranous part it contains the AV bundle, but this section shows the muscular part which contains the right and left bundle branches of the conducting system. B is the pericardial cavity. This is a very thin potential space between the parietal and visceral layers of the serous pericardium. The big size of the pericardial cavity shown in this section is artificial and is due to tissue shrinkage during preservation of the section. Identify the vessel A, what is the name of its direct continuation? Identify the vessel B with which vessel it anastomoses. This is the sternocostal or anterior surface of the heart showing the right atrium, right ventricle, and the left ventricle. First, let's identify the vessels. A is a vein. It is the great cardiac vein that starts at the apex of the heart, ascends up, continues around the left border of the heart, where it is going to join the oblique vein of the left atrium to form the coronary sinus. The artery is the anterior interventricular artery, or left anterior descending, and this artery passes around the apex of the heart, on the inferior border where it anastomoses with the posterior interventricular branch. The posterior interventricular branch is usually a branch of the right coronary artery on the inferior surface of the heart. But sometimes in left dominance it is a branch of the circumflex artery from the left coronary. Identify the structure A. What is the name of the thumbprint size depression it contains? and identify the valve B, what is the surface anatomy of its auscultatory area. This is a longitudinal section of the heart showing the fourth chambers. So we can see the left atrium, right atrium, the interatrial septum here between the right atrium and the left atrium. It also shows the left ventricle and the right ventricle. A marks the thumbprint size oval area or oval depression in the interatrial septum. This is the fossa ovalis and B is located at the right atrioventricular orifice, the opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And this is guarded by the tricuspid valve or the right atrioventricular valve. The sound of this valve is best heard just to the left of the lower part of the body of the sternum. Closure of this valve as well as closure of the mitral valve results in the formation of the first heart sound. Identify the structure. What is the name of its accompanying artery? This is a view of the inferior or diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Uh, you can see the posterior interventricular groove between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Note that the left ventricle forms most of the inferior surface of the heart. And you can see here also the right atrium receiving the inferior vena cava on the inferior surface of the heart. Also, you can see that there is a wide short vessel that opens into the right atrium just to the left of the inferior vena cava. This is the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus is the main vein of the heart. It is the continuation of the great cardiac vein that is located on the anterior surface of the heart and is formed by the union of the great cardiac vein with the oblique vein of the left atrium, which is a small vein that is not shown here. Two other main veins open into it. One of them is shown here, and this is the middle cardiac vein. And there is a small cardiac vein that accompanies the marginal branch of the right coronary artery. The small cardiac vein a begins at the apex of the heart and ascends in the posterior interventricular groove. It is accompanied by the posterior interventricular artery. Please note that the name posterior interventricular is a misnomer because it's actually related to the inferior surface of the heart, not to the posterior surface of the heart. For the second part of the question, how would you describe the dominance of this heart, right, left, or codominant? 
The origin of the posterior interventricular artery will determine the dominance of the heart. Here, the posterior interventricular artery is derived from the right coronary artery. After the right coronary artery gives the marginal branch, it passes around the inferior border of the heart to give the posterior interventricular. Now, variation in the branching patterns of the coronary arteries are common. And as I said, that dominance refers to the origin of the posterior interventricular artery. In 67% of the cases, the posterior interventricular artery is derived from the right coronary artery, and this is called right dominance, as in this case. In about 15% of the cases, the left coronary artery is the dominant, that's to say, the posterior interventricular artery will be derived from the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. And in about 18% of the cases, the dominance is codominance. There are two posterior interventricular arteries. One is derived from the circumflex of the left coronary and one is derived from the right coronary artery. Thank you.